All right, so we're going to start on a piece of paper. 743. Now, we're also going to go back and reference 740 in a little bit, but we're going to start on 743 with problem number two. We're going to skip problem number one, which will create some issues when we get to question number four, but that's all right. Oh, I can, we can dead. easily make it so that it's, it's all good. Okay? What? No, we're on 743 to start. I gotta charge this one. Okay. No. Problem two. Question four. Yeah, that's when we get issues. Okay? So the scenario is is that Beth and Allison are doing chores for their neighbors. Okay? Raking the lawn, cleaning the house, you know, that kind of a thing. So their side job. Okay, or it could be even their job. I don't know. I don't know Beth. I don't know Allison. Who knows? Okay? But they're young entrepreneurs, and they want to make some more of that green, that cold, hard cash. Or as uh, Randy Moss used to say, straight cash, homie. Okay? All right? That's what they want. Okay? So Beth says, well, I'm going to ask some of my friends to see what they think. So Beth asks Quentin and Alicia okay, to come up to help her come up with a plan where she can get more dollar dollar bills, yo. Okay? Alright? Quentin says you could start with a dollar so the first time you do it you get a buck. And then after that you get 50% more. And 50% more. And 50% more. Okay. All right. Alicia says you could start with a dollar and add a dollar every time you do it. So you get a raise every time you do it. Okay. All right. What I would like you and your groups to do now, and I'm going to give you about 10 minutes to do this, I would like you and your groups to, one, fill in the chart that fills out how much money Quentin and Alicia's plan would cover. I would like you to then graph both Quentin and Alicia's plan. And then I want you to really think about which plan you would choose under which scenarios. Okay? So you got 10 minutes to do that. Go. All right. What do you want to do? You want to do Quentin or do you want to do Alicia first? Quentin. Quentin. What color do you want to do? Quentin. Green? Okay. So, he started with a dollar. Dollar, dollar bills, yo. Okay. Then, next time, how much money did he make? Buck 50. Buck 50. Then, how much? 225. Then, how much? 3.375. No, remember, it's dollar, dollar bills. Yeah. So we only go to two. Okay. Then next time. Five dollars. Five what? Five dollars versus six two five. Five point six. Five point six? Or zero six, I should say. Five dollars and six cents. Okay, next time. Seven dollars and fifty nine cents. Seven fifty. Seven fifty nine. Fifty nine? I got fifty nine. Then? $11.40. $11.39? Yeah, that's what I said. Okay. And then? seventeen oh nine, right? Now, like, the thing is, your numbers might be a little different. Because if you didn't round, you got these numbers. But if you rounded, like, way back here in week three... Okay, and then use the rounded one, you might be off by a penny or two on the next one. And then you might be off by a penny or two on the next one. Then you might be off by two or four pennies on the next one, and so on and so forth. Each time you round and then you keep using that rounded number, you're going to be off by a little bit. Okay? Right? 10 cents more? Ten cents more? No. Okay. All right, so that means that here at zero, I started with a dollar. Then I went to a dollar fifty, 
Then I went to 225. Then I went to 338. Then 506. Then 759. Then 1139. Then 1709. What kind of a graph do we have? That is an exponentially growing graph. Exponentially growing graph. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to go with blue for Alicia then. So she started with a dollar. Next time, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So she started, so they started at the same point, okay, then she used a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Too high, one too many. What kind of a function does Alicia have going on? She's got a linear one. She does. Okay. So, based off of this one, let's call this one, we call this one Q of X, and we'll call this one A of X. Okay. Talk to me, which one would you choose? Q of X. So you choose Quinton? Okay. Yes, ma'am. You get a gold star for the day. Talk to me about what you mean by that, KG. Well, you're not making the morning Q of X until after five weeks. Until after the fifth week, right? Yeah. Okay. So it really depends on how long you're going to work. Okay. If this is like... If you're home for Christmas break from college and you're only going to work four weeks, I wouldn't choose Quentin. Okay? You're losing out on dollar dollar bills, yo. Okay? But if, if it's... If I'm making that much more per day, I'm just going to go ahead and quit my other job. Well, I get that. But if you're working for... As this is your summer gig where you're going to probably do it 12 times or so, then you'd probably want to work under Quicken's plan, right? Okay. So it really depends upon which plan you want, okay, or the length of time, I should say. So what I would like you guys to do now is I'd like you to do number two. You can do number two actually at the bottom of the page because you're going to need to have that data and then you're going to have to keep flip-flopping back and forth. I want you to come up with the two functions. I want you to come up with a function for... A of X for Alicia's plan, and I want you to come up with a function for Q of X, which is Quinton's plan. Remember that you told me that Q of X was exponential, so it's got to be of that form, and A of X you told me was linear, so it's got to be of that form. Great. All right, so... What do we come up with for either Q of X or A of X? What do you got for Q of X? You pick? Uh, 1 times 0.5X. 1 times 0.5X. Do I like 1 times 0.5X? No. I don't like it. Because you know why? In the second one, it would be point, It would be 0 0.5 then. It wouldn't be 1.5. 1 plus 1. 1.5X. What do you got? Wait, this is for Q of X. Right? Sure. 0 to the x power. So your a value is 1, really, right? Yeah. 
and then your b value is 1.5 and that's being raised to the x power so I'd be okay with just 1.5 to the x power is q of x. Okay. Do we like 0.5x plus 0.5? I don't like that either. What do we get for a of x? Oops. X plus 1. X, 1x plus 1? Yeah. Okay. Because in that case, our slope, our m, is the rate of change, and we're changing by a dollar each week. And our b is our starting, starting point, and we started with a dollar. So a of x here is equal to x plus 1. I like that. Okay. Now, based upon your choice from question 1, so if you chose Quentin or if you chose Alicia's plan, okay, I would like you to find how much money Beth makes in week number 10. Okay, go. So, going back to what KG said, which one is more monetarily beneficial, or which plan, I should say, is more monetarily <coughs> beneficial to Beth at 10 weeks? Q or A? Q is more beneficial, right? Okay. A would be, if it's less than five weeks, A would be better. Oh, I thought Beth was paying them. No. Okay. All right. So we're going to choose here Q of X. And Q of X, we said, was 1.5 to the X power. Well, what's X? 10. So I want to find Q of 10. That's going to be 1.5 to the 10th power, which is going to be $57.67. Okay. Now, a little backstory here about Allison. Allison was in question number one that we skipped over. Okay? So Beth and Allison are friends, and they're doing all of this work in their neighborhood. Okay? Allison said um, that she is going to make more money off of her neighbors. So she went with the give me one penny the first time I do your chores. And then the next week that I do your chores, give me two pennies. And then the next week, give me four pennies. And then give me eight pennies. And so on and so forth. Okay? Right? So that's um, a geometric sequence that can be written out as this. Okay? In a function... Let's say, oh, we want to call this Allison, so let's call it N. We'll put her in red. Actually, we'll keep her in, in orange. We'll go N of X is going to be 0 0.01 times 2 to the X power. Okay? So that's the function, not the sequence. Okay? So, my question to you now is, who's making more money? Beth, using Quentin's plan, or Allison, using her give me one penny and double it every week plan? Okay. After 12 weeks, we want to go with here. After 12 weeks. So, oops, I gotta extend it here. So, Allison, or excuse me, so Beth would be Q of 12 would equal 1.5 to the 12th power, which is what? How much is that? $129.75, roughly. 
for Beth. Okay. Allison. She's going to be, what did we say? That was N of 12. Oops, now my, my thingy's going, whoa, crazy. Zero point zero one times two to the twelfth, and that's gonna be how much money? Forty dollars and ninety six cents. Right? Okay. What I would like you to do now is I would like you to now investigate Beth using Quentin's plan. And Allison, using her plan, using your graphing calculator, I'd like you to tell me when they would be making, in what week, would they make the same amount of money. Okay? It's question number five. So I got that. But what's wrong with that? What? Can't see where they actually intersect, right? So what do we have to do? We gotta just just the window settings, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the window settings here now. Okay. X's. What are X's on our graph? But what are they? What are they? Words. I, I understand that they're negative 10 through positive 10. What are they in words? Numbers. It's the thing that you're raising X to. What are they in words? Look back at the problem. Days. Weeks. Weeks, right? So do I need to be negative? No. Why not? You can't, can't, can't go back in time. Okay? So I'm going to go negative 5 there. You'll understand. I like to see my, my axes, but I don't need to go any farther than that. Okay? Obviously, I need to go farther than 10 weeks, right? How far out do you want to go? 30. Okay. And let's go by 5-week intervals. That's just my scale. Okay? Whys. What's the whys in this? Scenario. Dollars. Dollars. So much, how much money they're getting paid, right? Okay. Is Beth or Allison ever going to pay their neighbor to do their work? No. would be funny. No. Okay. So I don't need to go negative, right? Negative means that Beth and Allison are paying them to do it. So I'm going to go negative. 100 there. You'll see why in a minute. How, you know what I mean? After what, 12 weeks, Beth was already making 130 bucks, right? So like a thousand maybe? And I'm going to go by a thousand, or by a hundred there, okay? Did they cross? Yep. Okay, so let's find the, that intersection as to where they cross. Oops, I want to get, keep these on here. Okay. So menu, analyze graph, intersection, and I get they cross at 16 weeks, which is six hundred and fifty nine dollars I think so too now I learned this in the last class you two finger it and you can paste it I know it's pretty sweet learned that in the last class no it won't let me come on now no, Lynn's will never be. 
as smart as the Promethean board. Okay? So this is saying that after 16 weeks, they'll be making the same amount of money. Okay? And then red will surpass blue and red will be making more money than after that. Yep. Okay? What I'd like you and your groups to do now is, and you got plenty of time to do this, I would like you to do problem number three, the half-life of caffeine. Okay? I want you to go through question number six. Okay? So this one is on page 745. It's kind of halfway down. So, Simeon drinks a Big Buzz energy drink, okay, and that contains 80 milligrams of caffeine, and caffeine has a half-life of five hours, okay? Half-life is the amount of time it takes a substance to decay to half of what it was at the start, okay? So, five hours later, how much does he have left in his system? He's got 40 milligrams in at the five-hour mark. And then what, Ben? And then at the 10-hour mark, he's got 20 milligrams. He's only got 20 left in his system. Okay. So complete the table for the amount of caffeine. So he started with 80 milligrams, and that was a... Zero half-life cycles, because that's when he drank the big buzz. Okay? Five hours later, we just said he's got 40 milligrams in, which is one half-life cycle. Ten hours after he drank it, he's got 20 left in his system, and that was two half-life cycles. Fifteen hours later, he's got 10 milligrams left in his system, and that's his third half-life cycle. 20 hours later, he's got five left over, and that was his fourth half-life cycle. Technically, he's always got some. He's always got some in his system, yep. What is the initial amount of caffeine in Simeon's system? Well, that was 80 milligrams. Okay. And what is the rate of decay? So 0.5 or one half, right? Okay. So Emily, Tyler, and Rennie were asked to write an exponential e function, A of T, to represent the amount of caffeine left in Simeon's system after T hours. Okay. Now, knowing the key from the textbook, who's right? Emily's right. Why? Thumbs up. She's got a thumbs up. Okay. Uh, so let's look at Emily. She said that her 80, because that's her initial one, right? That's her starting value. So that's why she picked 80. Her B value was 1 half, right? Because that's her rate of change, her decay, if you will. But then she's got this T divided by 5 for the exponent. Why does she have T divided by 5? Because it's 5 hour intervals and it's time. So that allows us to figure out if it's 14 hours later. It doesn't have to be a multiple of 5 then. Okay? If it's just T up there, then you've got to go off of 5 hour intervals. Okay? All right? So that's good. I like it. Tyler, what's wrong with Tyler's? Yeah, you have a negative. What does a negative exponent do? So it makes sense. You have to put the number over one. Okay. Under, under one. Yeah, you could end up getting negative milligrams. No, we would still get positive milligrams for an answer.
What, so what does negative five hours mean? Five hours ago, right? Okay. How many milligrams of Big Buzz energy drink are in his are in Simeon's system five hours before he drank it? None. Okay. So Tyler is going back in time. He's he's uh, back to the future. -ing. We have the genetic Marty. Okay. Rennie. What did Rennie do? She multiplied her her exponent by five, right? So she like went way too fast. So she just multiplied wrong. Okay. Did I miss one down here? Oh, yep, I did. So, how much caffeine remains in Simeon's system after two hours? Well, our function was A of T equals 80 times 1 half to the T divided by 5 power. So, that's going to be 80 times 1 half to the 2 fifths power, how much or how much caffeine is left in his system? That's why you have calculators. Everybody should be able to calculate this rather quickly. 60.63 milligrams. Okay. Now, question number six I want to spend some quality time on because it's kind of important. This unit, chapter 10 and chapter 11, we're going to be dealing with these exponential functions. And you're going to want to do this every single time. You're going to want to do what Kendra did. What did Kendra do that was wrong? She multiplied by the inside of the parentheses. Remember, our function was A of T equals 80 times 1 half to the t divided by 5 power. So go for it, bit. She multiplied 80 times 1 half to the exponent of t to, to the fifth, but that doesn't work because t to the fifth is the exponent of the fifth. And so what does that mean? It means that she would get a 1 half in there. No. Yeah, because... What? Okay. You would be cutting it in half. Okay. But what does what does this what does this do to that? It makes it greater or less. It what it controls it, right? So these let me put let me So these parentheses are like big thick walls, right? Okay? And when you try to put this 80 in, it gets blocked. No matter how many times you try, it's always going to be blocked by that wall. Right? Okay? It's order of operations. PEMDAS. Okay? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay? You do the parentheses first, which the parentheses are being controlled by the exponents. Okay? Before you can do the multiplication. Okay. Yep, it's all about order of operations.